What's up class? We're back to Fallout 4 here with a video on some creative lighting tricks that'll help you dramatically spice up your settlements. Some of these tricks you may have seen in my other videos or even other YouTubers, but I wanted to compile some of the good ones here so you only have to refer back to one video on a particular topic. Don't forget I keep a running text list of all the lesson titles in the Nomad Shop class and their links down in the description below labeled as Easy Link List for your convenience. Also, I'm going to be going over some of the philosophy of lighting design in this video too, something I don't think that's been covered at all yet. Now I'm going to build some of these examples here at my Jamaica Plain School dorm, but I may jump over to some other builds for a few examples. But most of the examples I'll show off from past builds. And I'll start off with some easy ones and work my way up to some more intricate ones later in the video, so be sure to watch all the way through. Okay, so let's get into it. First of all, to many of you, lights are just lights. You know, you put them up in your settlements, wherever they look good, and there may not be a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it. I mean, we're just having fun here with this stuff, so you don't have to take it too seriously. However, lighting is actually a complex subject in the world of architecture and interior design. You know, in those fields of study like light ergonomics or lighting design, it's usually divided into four categories, okay? Accent lighting, ambient lighting, decorative lighting, and task lighting. I put those in alphabetical order, but I'll break them up for you by common to least common. And as soon as I merely define these for you, it's going to change your whole perspective of lighting your settlements. So we'll start with ambient lighting. The purpose of ambient lighting is just generally to fill the area with light so you can see. It's the most basic form of lighting design and it's purely practical. You know, a typical office space or a classroom usually has very bright fluorescent lights directly above shining down and they don't usually try to do anything too fancy or decorative, right? Nothing artistic, really, just pragmatism. Task lighting is a smaller amount of lighting placed in a particular place for a particular focused task. For example, in that office workspace, a worker might also have a desk lamp for, you know, like a little extra lighting to read fine columns of numbers on a paper report, or you might have a table lamp for reading. You know, your refrigerator usually turns on a task light so you don't have to rely solely on the overhead light in the kitchen when you're selecting the food in the fridge. You know, you get the idea. Accent lighting is usually a smaller amount of lighting, but it's placed for more artistic reasons to draw attention towards like a sculpture or a plant or maybe even to guide people towards another room. Difference between task lighting is that accent lighting usually has a specific item in mind rather than a task in mind. And finally, there's decorative lighting, where the lighting itself is the artistic subject. A great example of this was the centerpiece of the Halloween build I showed you guys last Halloween, or even the faces in the background. Neon is a good example of decorative lighting, which can also serve a task. Now, as you can surmise, these categories can be mixed to create hybrids. For example, you might walk into the lobby of a big corporation and see some massive artistic chandelier that is both decorative and serving as the ambient light for the area. Or you might have floor track lights pointing to plants in a garden that both serve as accent lights and task lights to guide you down the walking path. Anyway, if you keep these categories in mind, you'll start to think of lighting your settlements with a little purpose and it'll phenomenally improve your building skills. So now let's switch gears to some tricks that you can do to achieve some cool effects. As I mentioned, we'll start off with some easy ones and work our way up to some more complex ones. The first trick is backlighting. This is where you hide a light behind something to draw your attention to that object without it being too obvious or blinding you. This is a form of accent lighting, sometimes with a little practical lighting mixed in. Plants are great for backlighting, as are statues or even some furniture. All right, so I'll show you some quick examples of some backlighting first. Let's see here. I think I have some here. Yeah, with the plants. See how I added a little light back there? It's subtle, but uh, if you enter through this door at night, then you'll see a little bit of a glow back there. All right. There's another example in the schoolhouse behind this teacher's podium here, right there. See, without that, this whole area over here would be dark. So, and then I'll give you an example with a plant. All right, so let's go back over to the dorm. And why don't I set a plant right here, just as an example. Okay. 
Okay, so say I have a plant there and now I want to draw a little attention to it. Then you can add a light right behind it. These are pretty good for backlighting plants. And what I'll do is let me move this out of the way first. Once you know where you want to put it, then you can secure the light a little easier by moving the plant out of the way. And then I can scoot the plant right up to it. In fact, if I wanted to go a step further, I could put the plant on a rug. And then scoot it a little bit closer to where the light is almost in the plant. Alright. There you go. Now, if this was a bushier plant, or maybe even if I sunk the plant into the ground, like if you were doing this outdoors, and there were more leaves to cover the light, it would look even better, you know? Um, this might even be able to be done with track lights. Like those floor track lights. Comes from one of the DLC. I think that's Wasteland Workshop. So I'm going to place it right there. Oh, that's pretty subtle. Let me move it out a little bit more. Well, let's turn it around. Let's see what happens. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, and then uh, speaking of those track lights, here's another way you can do some fun things with uh, accent lighting. So let's get out, like, let's say a display case. Yeah, one of these that I don't think is lit. Yep, it's not lit. And it's always facing the wrong way. <laughs> okay, and then let's say I want to put it right against this wall here. This is something I would probably rug glitch to get a little closer to the wall, but what we're actually going to do is uh, rug glitch. May have to use two, actually, to do this right. Because I have this wooden floor and it's not on solid ground, it may actually take the rug trick that I use to, uh, to get the radio into the center of that nightstand, but let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. And then what I can do is I can take the mat and just slide it into the display case. Now, I would probably need more mats. But I want to test something real quick. Okay, so first of all, you see how I've now lit that with some accent lighting? Without you even seeing the light, it's because the light's inside of this display case. But when I pull out the mat, it may drop through the floor. So let me let me see what happens here. Oh, it didn't. Okay. Let me just double check that. No, nope. it didn't. Okay, sweet. So it caught on to the mesh of this display case and didn't fall through the floor. But uh, if you wanted to have the light a little higher, for example, you know, maybe right now it's sitting at about this level, then you could do that trick I was just mentioning with the radio and boost it up to about here. So when you pull the rug out, it drops to about there and then it'll light more of the inside of this. And then what I probably would have done a little differently is just uh, taken a third rug and slid that, uh, let's see where it is. There it is. Yeah, it's right on the bottom. Barely caught on to the bottom of the mesh before falling through the floor. But uh, what I would probably do is I would have slid this forward in essence, basically using a third rug to slide it back. So this, of course, could be closer to the wall. And then the, uh, the little aura of the light would have been more centered on the display case. So you get the idea there. Now, another thing you can do is use crawl spaces to hide lights. 
So let's, I'm going to get, go ahead and get rid of this. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of the light here. I'm going to store it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to, let's see here. Just want to make sure I can pop that back into place. So I'm going to quick save real quick. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to uh, store this floor piece. And as you can see, I've got uh, a crawl space down here with uh, the wires uh, set up. Um, the wires are actually underneath these shack foundations, in fact. So they are basically running around. That You can see some over there. So what I'm going to do now is add that track light underneath here. You know, you could also add one of these lights or even a, if you want a lot of light, you can add a light bulb down here and it'll illuminate the entire floor. But um, let's see what happens with just one of those track lights. Just want the track light. There we go. Just about like that. See if I can jump out of here. No. Gotta add a little ladder or something. Okay. Had to use a bobble stand to get out. Okay, so let's uh place the floor back. And now you see we have under lighting from underneath the floor from that crawl space. So I can just slide that right back into place. And now that's uh got some accent lighting from below. And you can do that with colored lights. You can do that with cycling lights, all kinds of stuff. As long as you plan ahead and build a foundation underneath, you know, a crawl space underneath your structure, then you can hide all the generators and wires underneath and do a lot of this kind of cool accent lighting uh, from below. Simple enough. Now let's take a look at task lighting. You have a desk in your build, say. Try adding a table lamp for that lived-in look. If you have a kitchen or bathroom, try adding a light above the sink. And don't necessarily add a light above a bed unless it can be turned off. You know, this is all about adding that realism to your settlements. Cycling lights can make for great accent lighting, especially since colors can also convey a mood that you're trying to set. Warm colors for that quaint or welcoming feel, and cooler colors for that creepy vibe or party vibe or even sci-fi feel. By the way, with the discovery of the Wi-Fi glitch, the cycling light can be your new best friend, especially since you can manually set the colors differently from one another. Indirect lighting is also a staple of modern architecture. Hiding lights in recesses is a great way to add ambient lighting, accent lighting, and even task lighting. Another thing you can do is meld certain decorative lamps with furniture pieces. I did this with the soda machines in my Vault 42 build. I also did that in that bonus room in my uh, Sunshine Tidings co-op build. And as you can see, I also use light boxes as decoration and accent lighting, which is another trick you can do. In fact, this bonus room here is a great example of a lot of cool lighting tricks. This bonus room, by the way, was built for uh, one of my old Patreons, which is one of the perk tiers if you guys want to check out my Patreon page and join the student council. All right, guys, so there you go. The Fallout 4 lesson on lighting design. Been wanting to do this video for a while now, actually. Now, for a lot of players, lighting is usually the last thing you do with your settlements you know, other than decorate them with junk items. But hey, maybe now you might plan a little ahead and do some cool things that might make the lighting more of a fixture in your settlements. No pun intended. Of course, subscribe for more awesome tips and tricks like this, and throw a like on this video, and I'll see you in the next lesson on the School Zone. Happy building, and class dismissed.